a very warm welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Again, we worship from the sacred space of our own homes, apart but held together in God's love and through his Holy Spirit. You might not have your Palm Sunday cross from last year. Mine was used in our Ash Wednesday service, but you might find a cross in your home, one that you can use this morning. And so as we begin to worship, let's spend a quiet time either to light a candle or focus on your cross or simply to be still as we enter into God's presence. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy God, you are the source of all life, all goodness, all grace. You are the source of all love, all peace, all hope. May we know you near us, enfolding us, setting us free from all fear. Accept our heartfelt thanksgiving, our love and our praise. Amen. The Psalms record words of praise sung out as the pilgrims entered Jerusalem. We hear words from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us join in their praise as we sing. Having sung our hosannas to the King of Kings, we turn now to prayer and the knowledge that a week that begins with palms and praise goes on to become something quite different. Let us pray. You are beside us as we think about all that happened to you in Holy Week, where cries of praise turn to jeers, words of commitment turn to betrayal. Forgive our moments of weakness and failure you are ever faithful, and with gratitude we receive your mercy and forgiveness and grace. You met difficulty and hardship with courage and faith and love. Give us the courage, faith and love to face challenges this day and every day. Amen. 
When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and they put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. We expect to be able to walk into a supermarket and get whatever we need. It's been a shock, hasn't it, to see the empty shelves. Normal has been turned on its head and our expectations challenged. I think Palm Sunday must have been a day of mixed emotions and one of varying expectation. The pilgrims heading to Jerusalem must have been full of excitement. The Passover celebrated their liberation from Egypt and was something that they looked forward to each year. And finding Jesus there amongst them must have fired up a new expectation that here was a king that could liberate them from Rome. Palm branches, cloaks spread out, reminiscent of kingly processions of the past. And having heard of Jesus's healing ministry, there were no doubt personal expectations amongst the crowd too. As people cried out, Hosanna, save us. And I wonder if the disciples got caught up in all of that emotion and those expectations in spite of everything that Jesus had shared with them. It's so easy to get swept up and caught up by a crowd. I wonder what Jesus's expectation was that day. There's certainly no sign that he was celebrating. He must have known that he was embarking on the most difficult period of his life. He had wept over this city and longed to care for them as a mother hen spreads its wings over its young to protect them. But they had not listened. I wonder if the cult was you know, another attempt to say, I'm going to be a very different type of king. The crowds in all of their expectation must have been shocked that the very first thing that Jesus does is go to the temple and overturns the tables, challenging their religious leaders, not the leaders of Rome. What were they to make of that? The disciples have to keep experiencing what the Bible refers to as metanoia, a change of heart and direction. As they seek to travel with Jesus at this time, they are having to readjust their expectations and learn. We know that their expectations will be truly fulfilled, but just not in a way that they could have imagined at that moment. 
What are your expectations as we enter into Holy Week? Perhaps we will lament with Jesus the way of the world, the actions and confusions of the crowd. As we reflect on the pain and suffering of Jesus in this week, may we know that Jesus offers us himself, the power of sacrificial love which truly liberates. And so with great expectation and assurance, may we let that love that truly liberates set us free from all fear and anxiety at this time. And in response, may we hold up our crosses and sing out our psalms and our praise. May God bless you. Amen. Father, I place into your hands things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be. For I know I always can trust you. Father, we love to see your face, we love to hear your voice. Father, we love to sing your praise, and in your name rejoice. Father, we love to walk with you, and in your presence rest. For we know we always can trust you. This wonderful hymn we just sang speaks of a God to whom we can bring every concern and fear. So let's just take a moment of quiet and place into God's hands all of those who are on our hearts and minds today. Let's continue praying the prayer Jesus taught his disciples and gives to all of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us for worship this morning. Please do look out for the resources um, for Monday, Thursday and Good Friday so that we can also pause to reflect together then. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday. We close with a blessing written by Louise Goff for Palm Sunday. In your riding into danger, in your willingness to serve, in the suffering love of your cross, show us that we are not alone, but that you are beside us and always will be, and that because of your cross, there is nowhere your love cannot go. May you go with the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>